Welcome back to the SML Podcast. My name is Field Journal 007. This is Playing the Field with Field Journal 007. A few days ago, I teased in the group chat. Uh, I had a picture of my PS4 with my new Xbox One S kind of lined up together. The twinsies, the white-colored Xbox One and the white-colored PS4. Uh, I'm considering starting the sister... uh, sister league to the main league and having an xbox one league i don't know if anyone out there is a dual system user if there's xbox one or ps4 or if it, you guys are just strictly ps4 let me know if you do that way i would know how many members i would have carry over to that if that'd be something you guys would be interested in uh, my thoughts on it is it would kind of help with branding and kind of get our name out there more i'd like to be in the daddy leagues top 20 leagues i'd like to you know, get some more exposure through EA. I know that Madden Bomber League, they got a bunch of copies of the game sent to them last year just because how how large their league has grown and how many, I mean, just that, I think they're honestly the number one rated CFM out there. And I'm wanting to kind of brand us, branch us out in that way. I don't know how easy that would be. I've always been a one league guy. If I stayed to the same schedule Monday, Wednesday, or I'm, excuse me, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday advance. Maybe two games every advance I'd have to play, which would be kind of fun because a lot of times you're just you're waiting. You know, you're waiting on advance, and maybe that would help, or maybe I should do opposite schedule, do a Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, or do something like that. But uh, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think if that'd be something I should toy with launching a sister league to the main league. Uh, we did have to boot the Eagles owner, so if you're not aware of the rules, I will have a link in the description to the form. We have rules that articulate every aspect of the game from mixing up your play calling. When what, I'll clarify what that means. Um, I had a guy played a few weeks ago that would run, I think it's called uh, Flanker Drive. It's, it's a two-wide set, two tight ends under center. And I've got this play in my playbook as well, where your receiver on the right-hand side goes in motion and winds up running like a wheel route. The receiver on the left runs a drag route, and your two tight ends run streaks. And I had a guy that ran that play three or four times on the same drive. Um, In between, he mixed up screens, and we had an argument about uh, play calling. Uh, Defensively, you really don't have a whole bunch of plays you can call. You've got six or seven coverages. Cover three, cover two, cover four, cover six, um, cover, like prevent. I mean, you got basic zones. And even within those zones, you still have, if you're playing zone coverage, you're playing zone. You got a mixture of, you know, uh, yellow mid zone, hook zones. You got your uh, your deep zone. You got your shallow coverage. You've got purple to cover corners. Um, so, you know, you don't have a great mixture. You're going to mix it up between some zone coverage and, Honestly, I'm not a guy that's going to call a lot of man-to-man coverage. For one, my corners suck. Two, uh, man-to-man coverage is so easy to beat. You're better off using that as like a 20% of your uh, play calling. And the guy was just getting a little... I've gotten with two guys about that aspect. They're trying to say I don't mix up my plays because I play a lot of zone. First of all, Tony Dungy lived off of cover two. Lovey Smith lived off of cover two. So there's... Even the Patriots, I mean, they'll run cover three and two man under a lot of times, like the entire game. And so the thing about what gets cheesy is, is if you run the same offensive plays over and over and over again. And it doesn't matter if you have, uh, I'm trying to think, okay, let's say that you just call slants. You got your, uh, your under center, your two wide, two tight end, where you got two slants and then two uh, flat routes from the tight ends. And then you call slants out of three wide shotgun. Three wide receivers running slants. You got your running back or tight end running the uh, flat route or stick route, whatever you want to call it. But uh, how is that different? I don't care if you if it's a different formation. That's another argument I've had with people. Well, it's a different play because it's in a different formation. No, it's not. And I guess what I'm getting at here is if I'm telling you that you're and I'm not being like a dick about it. I say, hey man, just mix up your play calling. You know, uh, you call that play enough probably. And I've got the guys that have the audacity to get in a pretty mainstay argument with me about it of, uh, I want to let the rules tell me what to do. I don't know. First of all, um, I'm just as much of an admin as Prime is. We're both commissioners in this league. And if I tell you that you're violating a rule, it's because you are. I was the one that did the 
rough draft on the rules. I got them all in place, and then Prime went through, uh, changed some wording in it, polished up a few things, and kind of put it out there on the forums. So if there's anyone that knows the rules outside of Prime, it's me, because like I said, I was the one that did the rough draft on the rules when this league started. Basically a year ago, I mean, the month of April, I believe, is when we started this thing. So, for one, congratulations to us. We're staying afloat through two Madden cycles, which is pretty exciting. But anyway, just be sure to actually read the rules. I know so many guys didn't. That's why we uh, launched the quiz. We did a little eight-second quiz, which I, eight, eight second, eight question quiz. And then we kind of need to go through that, kind of uh, change some things up, add some rule, uh, add some different questions, maybe a little bit more challenging. I don't think that uh, it's a little too easy at this point. But still, it was a better step than what we had to begin with. And maybe that's something we could change in the future. So we'll see about that. But anyway, I just kind of want to let everyone know, please, if you haven't yet, go through the rules, familiarize yourself with the rules. You know, we have fourth down rules. We have, I mean, I, the guy, I had a guy uh, holler at me for going for a two-point conversion. First of all, two-point conversion is at your own risk. Second of all, I was down by eight points in the second or third quarter. I went for two to tie the game. That way I know I would get it. I didn't want to wait till later. So once again, it's kind of one of those things where the guy obviously didn't know what he was talking about, and I know what the rules in our league is. So anyway, that's kind of my soapbox on that. I don't have a whole lot going on right now. If you haven't checked out my personal channel, County Roads 574, please do. Link will be in the description to my channel. Check out my videos. I'm kind of more of an automotive vlogger. I'm kind of getting a little more entrenched with that. I have a 2010 Harley I'm planning on doing some things with. Uh, comment below. My big question for that right now is what kind of microphone setup I should use. And I do all my recording on a GoPro Hero 4. Um, right now I kind of have one of the three M adhesives it comes with. And I put the mount on the side, the left side of my helmet. I'm kind of looking for the best way. I've seen guys, um, I'm not really sure what mount they're using, but they'll put a mount on the, or the, basically the mouth portion of their helmet. And it seems to get a nice uh, view of what they're trying to record. If I don't have my camera lined up perfect, and of course the GoPro I have doesn't have a screen, so that doesn't help. But uh, anyway, comment below what kind of microphone set up and what kind of mount I should be using on my helmet, if you know. Um, other than that, I not found a whole lot going on. I know uh, in NBA, you got Steve Kerr battling his back injury. It's kind of weird how many box surgeries there are, like Peyton Manning, like the whole thing that spiraled his health out of, out of control was... Uh, the neck surgery, the fusions that didn't take, and they just kept doing it over and over. And then he went over, I think it was to Germany, had some experimental stem cell stuff done. So it's just kind of crazy. You think that these guys who have millions and millions of dollars would be able to go to, you know, a decent, you'd think it'd be a decent surgeon and not be screwing stuff up. But I guess even with modern medicine, they're still screwing stuff up. So hopefully Steve Kerr can get back to health, not having any issues, and see what can happen. Because I don't want people to say that. The Cavs win because Golden State didn't have their coach. First of all, Golden State has Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, uh, Clay Thompson. They got probably a 99 overall team on NBA 2K. I don't know. I haven't pulled it out. But obviously, I'm rooting for LeBron. I have been watching him for – I really started watching basketball when I was a freshman or sophomore in high school. And that's kind of who I started following was – LeBron James, I picked up an NBA 2K6, and just that's how I got into basketball, in all honesty, which is kind of lame. But that's also how I got into football was because of Madden. Um, I didn't watch football before I played it on Madden, so fun fact about me. Anyway, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. That way you can stay up to date on everything SML. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at SimMaddenLeague. Um, other than that, Good luck kind of getting your games done. We've got about, as of right now, about two hours before advance. I hope I can get this video out tonight. We'll see how it goes. But uh, like, subscribe, take care. Have a great day.